Welcome to the JSP lecture series. In the first lesson, we had seen the introduction to the JSP. Let's see what we had already talked. We had seen the introduction to JSP, what we mean by JSP. We had seen some features of the JSP, why JSP is so popular. And then we had talked about it, how a JSP page can be converted into servlet and then executed. We had seen the life cycle of the JSP and we also have seen the architecture of the JSP. Then we talked about the JSP processing and uh, we had seen with the help of a diagram that how JSP pages are processed. So in the today's lesson, we will talk about the uh, JSP environment, JSP syntax and some JSP components. So let's see how we can run a JSP page. To run a JSP page, we need two things. One is a JSP container or we say the JSP or servlet container. And the second thing is we need an IDE. Yes, that is an integrated development environment. This IDE can be Eclipse or NetBeans or any such IDE to run the JSP pages. And we need a JSP or servlet container. The most commonly used container is the Apache Tomcat container, which is used to run the JSP pages. So in the JSP environment, we need to set up two things, an IDE and then a servlet container that could be Apache Tomcat to run the JSP pages. JSP syntax uh, is almost similar to that of XML and all the JSP tag must conform to the following rules. These are the simple rules. Here, every JSP tag must have their matching end tags. The attribute must appear in the starting tag of the JSP and attribute value must be specified. We'll see uh, this with the help of some examples later. But before that, let's talk about the JSP components. A JSP page consists of the following components, not necessarily all components are included, but yes, most commonly we use almost all these components. The one is the directives, which is written inside these uh, symbol. This is the opening tag. At the rate symbol indicates that this is a directive tag. And then we have declarations where the exclamation marks with the starting tag indicates that this is the declaration. Expression is indicated by an equal to sign with the starting tag and the scriptlets are written normally in these opening and closing tags of the JSP. Then we have the actions that are associated with the JSP. We'll talk uh, about these all in details one by one. So let's continue and see what are the JSP directives. JSP directives are messages that tells the web container how to translate a JSP page into the corresponding servlets. Basically, there are three types of directives, the page directive, the include directive, and the tag lib directive. Let's see the page directive. The page directive defines attributes that apply to an entire JSP page. Basically, this tells the scope of uh, the JSP directives, JSP attributes, that these attributes are applied to the entire page. For an example, let's say if we have a Okay, this is the syntax before we go to the example. Uh, we had seen this is the add rate symbol, add rate symbol that indicates that this is a directive. Then we uh, specify the page name of the directive, then the attribute and its value. Let's see this with an example. Let's say we have a JSP page with some HTML code and also some JSP code. So here we are using the import attribute with the importable package. So here we are importing java.util.date package. This is basically a Java code embedded inside the JSP tag. So here we are using this uh, import uh, attribute with the value, the imported package, java.util.date, and we have specified that this directive have a scope of entire page, the entire JSP page. Now using this package, we can uh, use uh, some expressions and we can print the date. So this is, we have created the date object and the current date will be displayed into this example. This example can be stored with .jsp in a file with .jsp extension. We can use the IDE to create the file, to save the file, and then the servlet container Tomcat Apache to execute this 
JSP file. The some attributes of the JSP page directives, like we had seen, this is the import. We have lots of uh, important attributes. One is the import that is used to import classes, interfaces, and all members of the package. It is similar to the import keyword in the Java class. So we had already seen this example where we are using the import attribute and we are importing some class that is the date class here to display the current date. The next attribute is like content type. This uh, defines the MINE uh, type of the HTTP response. This is the multi-purpose internet mail extension type of the HTTP response. The default value is always text. HTML with carrot set ISO 85.88591. So this is how we can use the uh, content type attribute. We will be using the directive. Then we will be mentioning that this is a page directive that has a scope on the entire JSP page. And the content type is the attribute name. And then this is the value of that content type. So now we can again uh, display the date and we can do anything inside. The next directive after the page directive is the include directive. The include directive is used to include the contents of any resource. It may be another JSP file, the HTML file, or any other text file. Syntax, we can see we use the directive symbol, then include. This is the directive, specific directive, and then this is the attribute. What we are going to include, we are going to include a file. And then the value, that is the resource name. It could be anything like uh, index.jsp or uh, resources.html, abc.txt or any name of the file with the its part. Then we have this example where we are including this file header.html into our web page. And then uh, we are using the expressions to print the time using the calendar class of the util package of the job. The next uh, directive is the taglib. This is the third directive after the page and include. The taglib directive is used to define tag libraries that defines multiple tags, that defines many tags. The syntax is similar. We use the add to rate symbol to identify uh, that this is the directive. Then we use the, we use the directive taglib. Then this is the attribute URL and this is the value to the attribute. We can also have multiple attributes wherever it is uh, required. So we have an attribute prefix and then this is the value of the attribute. So we can see this is another example of this uh, taglib directive. This can be saved into a JSP file and can be executed with the help of the ID and the container. The next tags are JSP declaration tags. After the directives, we have declaration tag. This is the next component of the JSP page. This is used to declare fields and methods. We can use this declaration tags to declare fields like data types. Here we can see that this is int data type and the value of the variable is data and the, val the name of the variable is data and the value of the variable is 50. So this is how in JSP, how we can declare variables or we can declare basically fields or properties. We can also do uh, and declare the methods in the same way. We use the declaration tag. So this is an example where we are declaring a data integer type data variable with value 50. And then we can use the expression tags to print this variable. So you can see this is how we can uh, create a method also using the declarative tag with the help of this exclamation mark. This indicates that this is a declarative tag. Inside the declarative tag, we have the method definition. This is int return data type of the method. Cube is the name of the method. Int n is the parameter. And inside the curly brackets, we have the processing. So this is how we can also declare the methods into the declaration tag. The third component is the expression tag. The closed the code placed within the JSP expression tag is written to the output stream of the response. It's basically sent to the output stream. This is the expression we were uh, already talking this. We had seen how we can print the date, how we can print the variable in the previous examples. So the syntax here is simple. We use the equal to symbol with the opening tag and then we uh, mention our statement which we want to print or we want to send to the 
output stream of the response. This will be printed on the web page. So this is a simple example just to print welcome message to the user. Uh, we use the expression tag and then welcome to JSP. This will be printed on the user's web page. Now the expression tag that prints the username, we can say we have two JSP pages. One is the index.jsp, which will accept the username with the help of the form, HTML form and its components. If you do not know how to code this HTML or you do not know what is this form, you can see the uh, video specifically I have created for the HTML and form section. So in one uh, JSP page, we have this form and inside the form we have a input type field to accept the username and we have a button uh, which will trigger the user action. And then the another page which is user.jsp, uh, which is the user.jsp where we will be printing the uh, message using the expression tag. So we have used this expression tag, welcome, and then we'll be using the request object and then we'll get parameters from the request object. What parameter we are trying to get? We are trying to get this uname parameter, which has been defined in the previous file with uname. So this, you can see the component input type. This is a text component. Name has been defined as uname. So we are calling this uname here in this second file with the help of the get parameter. This is uname. So whatever the values are input into this text box will be fetched and stored into uh, this or will be fetched and printed here in the form of request.get parameter uname, right? So welcome and then we'll get the name of the user inputted by here. Now JSP scriptlet stacks, these are the next components, next components in the series. A scriptlet tag is used to execute Java source code in the JSP. So any Java source code will be executed inside this uh, JSP scriptlet stack. It's pretty simple. We can print any value using the, the help of like out.print or we can get the message inside. If you remember in the Java, we used to write system.out.print. But here we do not use system. We simply use out.print because this is a scriptlet tags that is used to execute the Java code, which will send this to the output stream. Now, let's see the example of the same thing which we had already seen with the help of the script led tags. This is the same page which is accepting the username with the help of the text box and then with the help of the button, we are using the form section as well. And then in the other file, we are getting this uh, username with the help of the request.get parameter. But this time, we are storing this value into a variable name. So we are storing the user's name into the string that is name and then with the help of the out.print we are printing this name. So this is with the help of the scriptlet tags. You can see this is the Java code kept inside the scriptlet tag. So we have seen what are the JSP environment, JSP syntax and uh, what are the JSP components. Some main components are directives, declarations, expressions and scriptlets. We'll be talking about JSP actions in the next lesson. Thank you so much.